Hi everyone and welcome to the second video in a series of video tutorials that we will present over the next few months on Community Scheme Open Service Adjudications. We intend to describe those that we find particularly interesting or helpful to community schemes in general. The subject of this video is the adjudication of the dispute between Pauline Leith, the trustees of Millerhof Body Corporate and Merrick Griffiths. The applicant was the owner of Unit 6 in the Millerhof Sectional Title Scheme. The second applicant was the trustees of the body corporate represented by the chairperson and assisted by the managing agent. The respondent was the owner of Unit 8 in the scheme, which is located directly above the applicant's unit. The applicant lodged the matter for dispute resolution by the CSOS in terms of Section 38 of the CSOS Act. After the conciliation process failed, the matter was referred for adjudication in terms of Section 48.4 of the CSOS Act. The essence of the dispute was that a wooden deck was built in the common area without the authorization of the body corporate and approval of city council. It was alleged that the wooden deck caused water ingress to Unit 6 below, which caused damage to its interior. Furthermore, the applicant submitted that the noise and litter emanating from the deck above was a nuisance which interfered with her enjoyment of her garden in violation of the scheme's conduct rules. She further submitted that her privacy was infringed by people using the deck. The applicant requested that the wooden deck be removed and that the resultant damage to her unit be repaired. The trustees also applied for relief to get the deck removed as it was illegal, costly to maintain and caused the water ingress damage in Unit 6. The respondent submitted that when he purchased the flat, the wooden deck was the main attraction and that he paid more for the unit because of the additional cost of the deck. The respondent disputed that the water damage in Unit 6 was caused by the wooden deck and therefore contested its removal. The issues in the dispute included 1. Whether the wooden deck was illegal or not and whether the owner of Unit 8 bought the property knowing that the deck was illegal. 2. The advisability or otherwise of removing the deck. 3. Whether the deck caused or contributed to the water damage in the structure and the electricals of the unit below. four. Which of the parties should bear the costs of remedying the damage caused to Unit 6? The adjudicator ordered that, in the first place, the wooden deck was built on common property without the authorization of the body corporate and approval of city council, and was therefore illegal. Two, the water ingress from Unit 8 and the leak through the parapet wall supporting the deck caused or contributed to the damage to Unit 6 below. The logical next step was to either legalize the structure or to remove it. The deck was built on common property and therefore belonged to the body corporate. The trustees submitted that common property must be for the enjoyment of all the owners and they submitted that the respondent was the only one who had access and used to access, use and enjoyment to the deck. They further submitted that based on remedial and maintenance work done on the deck and the resultant cost already incurred by the owner of Unit 6, retention of the deck would be costly to the body corporate without any benefit accruing to the body corporate. For these reasons, they requested that the deck be removed. The argument against its removal was based on the enhanced value that the deck brought to Unit 8, specifically the entire complex generally. Proof of the cost-benefit analysis was not presented to, as evidence to rebut the argument that it would be costly to maintain for exclusive use of that owner. In regard to the responsibility for the cost of removing the deck and the cost of repairs to Unit 6 from the resultant water ingress, damage, it was decided that the deck was located on common property and as such any costs related to the removal or its maintenance or remedying any damage caused by the deck should be the responsibility of the body corporate. I hope you enjoyed this video and found that the content was very interesting. Until next time, goodbye.